So this week I was talking to a good friend after class and um, anxiety came up when we were talking about things in life and etc. And then the topic about anxiety came up. And we were exchanging a little bit of, you know, of our experiences, telling each other how anxiety has impacted my life or has impacted his life. And uh, he's clearly a person more uh, predisposed to anxiety, as I am. And, um, and then I was sharing a lot of things um, about how I have dealt with anxiety in my life. And, um, and then I went back home and I was thinking over the weekend, today's Monday, and um, and the, and I was trying to make this parallel about what I have done so far um, to curb my anxiety in some moments and etc. What I have done to learn. And again, I'm not a mental health professional. I'm a martial arts coach, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, MMA combatives, etc. I also run my business, and uh, and and my initial. Um, education was in IT, so I was a system analyst for many years, uh, always doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so, but that was stressful as well, right? So uh, that was about 20 years ago when I really uh, was going through a lot of things in life. Life is just, you know, getting complicated, like it's normal, um, but because probably I'm more predisposed to some, to be more anxious that it started to affect in me uh, to the point that it was kind of a little overwhelming and I, I decided on my own to, you know, look for an external help through a therapist that I was more a behaviorist, uh, you know, type of therapy and that helped me a lot. And long story short, I think I mentioned that before in my podcast. I, um, actually, I'm, I'm saying all those things because I want to explain how I have dealt, like I said, and, and my first thing was through Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So, um, one of the things my therapist came to the conclusion uh, was that I could not stop Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. In my case, because first of all, I was too involved, uh, it had been already, uh, I don't know how many years that I was training. So probably like 12, 13 years training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And at that point, one of my, um, one of my decisions, um, uneducated decisions, because I didn't know bad about how Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was helping me, was to quit Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu so I would have time to reorganize the things in my life that were chaotic at the moment. Well, this is the first advice that my therapist said, like, don't quit Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So she did a good job and homework trying to understand and know more about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. She actually watched me compete one time. And then she said to me, like, don't you see what Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu offers you every single day? And I said, like, I don't know. Just right now, it's just like, it's one more thing on my, my, my schedule, busy schedule. And she goes, no, number one, you need those two hours for yourself. Right? You need to take two hours to disconnect from the outside world. You need to make sure that you are immersing yourself in the class, paying attention to your instructor. Actually, my instructor back then, my former instructor was really helpful. And, um, and uh, I'm thankful uh, to him for that. But um, anyway, so she said, like, you need those two hours for yourself. You need to disconnect from the outside world for, you know, those, the period of time because there's a lot of good things happening to you. And those things will kind of balance um, your stress, right? So, so for instance, um, she was saying like, um, "Don't you see what's what, what happens every single time you are you finish training, finish rolling, for instance, right? Because we're doing all that concentration of strength and we tensing all all of our muscles, regardless if you're doing more like a faster move or not. But at some point, like you know, we're holding somebody and you know, grappling and grabbing and you know, gripping. And then when time is up, what we do is that, and then shake and bump and just have that feeling, right? So we do that like four, five, six times in one training session, right? After uh, uh, every single time we row and we finish, we have that. And then at the end of the class, usually the guys sit back there against the wall and then they're just like relaxing, open up their geese and um, take their little break. And sometimes they even take some time to leave the, the gym because they're so tired. And that's what we're looking for, right? The relaxation. 
that naturally Brazilian Jiu Jitsu provides at the end of the class, at the end of each, um, uh, you know, each class or each training. And, and I believe that maybe other martial arts might have a different um, effect on the body and the mind. But in, in our case, in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, is this thing like we, the body telling the brain that we are tired. And in this process of exercising, uh, we all know that you, your body releases uh, the feel-good hormones. Um, one of that I feel like is for everything I have researching and reading is serotonin. That is pretty much a hormone that regulates your self-confidence, right? So we leave a little bit. We leave the, the the school with the shoulders, you know, like Jordan Peterson says, like shoulders up and open and and and. And we have more confidence in ourselves, at least. Um, and then we have all this endorphins. And, and of course, all those hormones will counterbalance the effects of your stress hormones and etc. So that's number one. I feel like after that, one of the things I, I try to understand is really like the, the physiology of the stress or the, the stress mechanisms in your body. How our brain works and how those uh, stress uh, related hormones affects our body and, and the physiological effects like you're shortening your breath and and, um, and and some people get like that tunnel vision the lightheaded or uh, heart goes uh, heart rate goes up and and, and that can lead to um, scary moments and for some people because it can escalate to a point that is incapacitating and etc cetera, etc cetera. but so um, with this search for knowledge um, I end up coming across a few um, books that I really liked and really helped me. Um, one is called The Confidence Gap. I'm gonna put the link down there. And uh, in my in my situation, it's not it wasn't a lack of confidence. It was something else. It was a stress. But the book actually addressed more the anxiety, and it's based on uh, what they call ACT, which is acceptance commitment therapy, and. Um, and it's very interesting, um, the techniques that Russell Harris, the writer, proposes. And this is something that he developed together with another psychiatrist. And, um, and I felt like some, some, for some people especially, those exercises, for me, um, it seemed to, to be really helpful. Um, I read some other books. Uh, one is called, uh, it's from a biologist called Robert Sapolsky and why zebras don't get ulcers. It's a pretty interesting book that, that uh, addresses stress, anxiety, depression, and etc. cetera. And, um, and also, um, recently now, I started reading more about the personality traits, the big five personality traits, which is pretty much, um, it's based on science and data and, and psychometrics. And, uh, so Jordan Peterson has this website called understandmyself.com, uh, and I suggest you to maybe like do that test. Um, you pay a small fee of ten bucks just to help them maintain the website, and um, the the it, it pretty much going to answer a hundred questions, and and you're going to have a pretty good assessment of your personality based on the big five and the sub traits, and. Um, and then you might you might find out that you might score a little higher in this personality trait called neuroticism, which is subdivided in withdrawal and volatility. And some people will be more, like I said, predisposed to be anxious over um, you know challenging uh, situations or for whatever other reason. I'm not talking about physiologically speaking. I'm just talking about your personality. And again, I'm not a mental health. I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. So if you feel like you, you're suffering from uh, you know, strong anxiety and you're having a trouble um, dealing with that by yourself, my advice is always look for a professional. Don't be ashamed of that. Um, but I'm just trying to expose and uh, to explain what I have done to help me out. So um, number one, I found out that I score a little higher in neuroticism. So I know that because I'm naturally a little more anxious. And I can tell that by the way, uh, every time when I go compete, I feel a little bit of anxiety. It's not fear. And that's a whole thing too, that I, I, I don't want to forget. I'm going to say right now is that talking to my friend, I noticed that he felt really bad for feeling that way. 
And, um, and I, I think I said to him, like, first of all, just understand that it's normal, right? Don't feel like he's a, 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 um, a less, a weaker person, let's say. Like, don't, don't think like you're weaker because you tend to be more anxious or you tend to have sometimes an anxiety that can incapacitate you. Don't feel that way because um, for some people, it's just like the way that you are. And, and, and the most important for me, and actually this is something that, another book that I re read that was pretty good, um, the name is The Courage to be Disliked. Um, and it's pretty much this conversation between a philosopher and an apprentice. And, uh, and then the philosopher, throughout this conversation, has explained the uh, Adlerian psychology from Alfred Adler. And um, so to just say summing up, it's uh, what really the most important is how we act facing the challenges that life uh, brings to us. And, and one of the challenges in my life was to deal with anxiety. You know, I played basketball, I played other sports, I played, um, you know, competing in jiu-jitsu a lot. Um, nowadays, what another thing I do to help me um, to have better control over myself is, for instance, I, I like to go compete in shooting competitions now. I'm not looking to get the first place or to be like, so first of all, uh, all the firearms training that I do, it's towards self-defense and combatives to help even to understand better uh, the firearms manipulation so I can teach better self-defense and combatives classes. But when I go to tournaments um, and this small competitions, I feel the butterflies and, and um, and then we have all these thoughts and etc. So I just like pretty much is my way to do my stress inoculation or desensitize myself uh, under if when I find myself under stress. Because realistically, I want to have a good control over my mind, uh, have a more reason when I feel like something natural that is uh, uh, in you know part of me, which is anxiety. Uh, um, comes up, so I want to have a better control. I want to be able to normalize the situation when, which it could be a self-defense situation. When I find myself in in a struggle, I don't want anxiety to go up uh, to the point that incapacitate my actions and reactions. So um, it's very simple, you know. This is like all under control, but um, I know that it affects the stress of my body. I know what I need to do to to keep my focus, to relax, to bring my heart rate lower or my breathing to a better state where I can get more uh, or become more focused and etc. So um, what, I, what I would like to say to finish is like, um, number one, if you do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and you're suffering from anxiety, my, my advice is keep, keep coming to classes, just change a little bit your focus. Come for what it offers you, uh, uh, what offers to your mind and your body which is uh, first a disconnection from outside world, a, uh, a relaxation after the class, after all the, 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 the workouts and etc. So, so go for that. Go uh, to see good friends, to be among good people, people that uh, care about you, people that are in the same mission. I think that helps a lot too. Um, so that's number one. Number two is don't be afraid to look for help if you need to. Um, it's not a sign of weakness, uh, in my opinion. Some people will, will be more predisposed than others. Um, so in my opinion, I guess it's just a science. Uh, some people will have a natural uh, predisposition to be a more anxious person or a depressed person for whatever reasons, all the different reasons. And in that case, if, you, if you're not so sure about yourself, again, you know, try to understand more, try to read more, try to look for good sources. And, and and also to finish up, watch out with motivational speakers and, and people that just give an advice like, you shouldn't feel this way, you should be strong, you should man up, and etc., etc. Because what if you do everything that consciously you can do to cope and to deal with your stress, and you, you think like, okay, I'm not going to think about this, I'm, I'm going to get calm, I'm going to get calm, I'm going to do this, but then all of a sudden it comes up again. Right, but the guy on the video, on YouTube video, is telling you like, "You are strong. You are this. You are that." But um, internally, you're not feeling that way. Like that's not a weakness at all. It's just the way that you are. And then you get to know more about stress. You get get to know more about you, so you can have better control. So watch out with motivational speakers that just tell you to man up, 
to be the stuff dude and etc. Some guys or some girls, and that applies to men or women in my opinion, some people will have this predisposition, uh, like I said, um, to have more anxiety. Some people just like, well, I've never felt that, you know, that's fine. Uh, what is good, what is bad. I don't think there's good or bad in that situation. It's just like, um, it's all about what do you do, or what you do to face, when you're facing those situations, you know? So in my case, uh, when I'm anxious and stressed, I come to Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, well, I have to come because I teach, but not only I teach, but I roll. I, I try to read more. I try to do things that calm me down. Um, I love going for hiking. I love being um, uh, in the nature. I love to live the moment, but not forgetting about the future because nobody can live just the moment. Um, that doesn't work. That's not real. We have to live in the moment. We have to absorb everything that's going on. We have to focus uh, in our task ahead. And when I'm doing jujitsu, it's like, what am I going to do with my teammate? Or, you know, how am I going to defend the situation? How am I going to attack and etc. And at the same time, I'm thinking about my self-improvement. Um, in my life, I'm, you know, doing what I have to do, but I'm thinking about, you know, my future, my retirement, my, my life, my peace, my peace of mind, and et cetera, et cetera. So that's my, my weekly video for today. Don't feel weaker. Don't feel um, worse than anyone just because you are more anxious or, or if you have a predisposition to uh, depression, et cetera. What I say is, most important is to not give up. The most important is to look for answers, to find out more about yourself, to find out more about life, about people, about psychology, psychiatry, about um, you know philosophy. Uh, read more, educate yourself, because that might help you to recognize these feelings as they come. All right, have a great week ahead. Uh, if that's your case, if this message is for you today, Go to your jiu-jitsu school, train more, grapple more, uh, disconnect from outside. Don't take your anger and your anxiety on anybody else. Um, life is good. God bless you.